Do you know you have authority? Yes, you. You have authority over sin, over addiction, over sickness, over anxiety, over depression. Sin shall not have dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. In Luke chapter 10, we see Jesus saying, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In this video, I want to elaborate on your authority as the believer because Christ has given you this authority. In context to that scripture, the disciples were sent out, the 70, for the missionary work and they were commanded to heal the sick, to raise the dead. They are back from the mission with joy and rejoicing. They told Jesus, we have healed the sick, we've raised the dead, we've done miracles in your name. And Jesus responds, was so weird that he said to them, I see Satan fall from heaven like lightning. That could cause so much disturbance in the brain of anyone because they would be like, Lord, we just told you that we've performed our assignment, the one you sent us successfully, and you're telling us to see Satan fall. Actually, Jesus was refocusing them to tell them that there is more to this than what you've just seen. He is telling you, Behold, that's a beckoning. Look here, I have given you power. You may be a believer not knowing that you are endowed with authority because you just live your life, live your daily life, you take the Christian thing, you don't want to take it too serious, so you don't want people to give you their perception. If you want to just live the normal Christian life, you may not get to be in line with your divine purpose. And when Christ says, I give unto you power, power in the Greek, the word he used is exosia, which is the word authority. If you check other translations, you see it's written, I give unto you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and upon all the powers of the enemy. Now there's an assurance given to you, nothing by any means shall hurt you. The number one point is recognize your authority. Authority means the power of rule, or government. Exosia is the authority of which your will and your command will be submitted to by others and then will be carried out, will be obeyed. And Christ is telling you when it comes to your life, the devil is at work. He's engaging Christians, he's assaulting Christians with sickness, with death, with addictions, with depression and all kinds of evil. He's assaulting Christians and Jesus is telling you, I give you power. That's your gift. So recognize your authority. The Bible says to them that receive him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. The word power used there is the word exosia, which is that authority. So your authority is birth from when you give your life to Christ and receive him into your life, which is you are now living in his kingdom because you have the king of the kingdom living inside of you at this point you can express the realities of the kingdom. So the reality of your believing in Christ is that you wear this authority on a daily basis. You know you have this authority. Recognize that you have the authority to reign on earth. Recognize you have the authority to reign in life. Recognize also that you have the authority to legislate things in life. Christ has redeemed us from all tribes and kindred and tongue and people and nation and he has made us kings and priests unto God that we may reign on earth. Coming to Christ gives you the authority to reign on earth. You don't need to stay on the fence and allow things to just happen in your life and you'll be like, if, if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. If it's not meant to happen, it's not going to happen. No, God has given you authority. You need to tell things that are to happen to happen and you need to tell things that are not to happen not to happen. And in Romans chapter 5 verse 17, it is said that of those that have received the abundance of grace and of the gifts of righteousness, they shall reign in life. My brother and sister, if you reign in life, sickness cannot reign. The Bible says you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You have been called out from darkness into God's marvelous light. You are not to be in a place that darkness will be a threat to you. You should be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You are to reign in life and when you reign, sin cannot reign because sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? You are not under the law, you are under grace, you are under Christ. You can come to a place of knowing like the scripture says and you shall decree on a thing 
and it shall be established that you can legislate. You wake up in the morning, you can legislate. Number two, exercise your authority. You know you can have authority and know that you have it, but the authority does not work for you because you've not exercised it. A parent can have authority in his or her home, but they are not exercising their authority. They allow the children to go wayward. In your life, you are to exercise your authority, your God-given authority. He says, I have given you this authority. There are three things you can do to your authority. You can undermine your authority. One, you can relinquish your authority. Two, or you can exercise your authority. What would you choose? A Christian that undermines his authority is a Christian that does not even care that they have authority or not. And at that point of undermining your authority, you are keeping yourself in a place that you can relinquish it. You can let the devil do what he wants to do in your life. You can allow the devil to mess with you as he wants because you're not using your authority. But a Christian that the devil is afraid of is a Christian that uses his or her authority. Jesus said to the devil, get behind me. That's authority. So in your daily life, allow the life of Jesus to be a mirror for you. To behold your life when the devil comes at you the bible says you resist the devil and he will flee from you john 10 10 says he comes to steal to kill and to destroy if you know that the assault that the devil wants to carry out in your life is to steal to kill and to destroy why wouldn't you exercise your authority as someone that knows that you have wake up in the morning and command things because you can legislate with your authority the bible says trading on serpents and on scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Training means to walk on them, which means for you to walk on something they are under your feet. Now let's read the scripture passage for that. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him head over everything for the church and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. The Bible says that Christ is far above all principalities and powers, all rule and authority, which is all authority are under him. And now he tells you that you have been raised up with him, seated in the heavenly places with him. So what are you now? You are far above all principalities and powers. You have authority over all the powers of the enemy that's what it means now you see why you should exercise your authority because if the devil knows you are ignorant of your authority he will steal your faith and once he steals your faith he will then steal your life and kill you and destroy everything about your life and even your lineage and you don't have to let that if sickness is attacking your child if you are feeling headache or sickness of any kind it does not belong you can cast it out let me tell you exercising your authority is about you knowing that this powers and this fight is a spiritual fight the bible says we are not fighting flesh and blood we are fighting principalities and powers so put on the old armor of god and this old armor talks about the elements of your faith the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness knowing that you are not righteous in and of yourself your righteousness like the bible says are like filthy rags your righteousness is that of christ you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus it says put on the breastplate of this let that guard your heart knowing that you don't have righteousness of yourself. It is that of Christ that you are wearing. And because of that, that's how you fight the devil. And he says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, destroying or dragging down of every imagination and high thought that wants to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is that you may be in health and prosper. When that knowledge wants to exalt itself above the knowledge of God is to make you believe that sickness has a right to your life is to even make you believe that the monthly fever that comes is normal it makes you see sickness as a normal when it's not supposed to be and this is your place to exercise your authority when you feel the symptom of sickness you attack it you send it packing when you exercise your authority as a believer guarding your heart against the fears that the devil is throwing at you the devil is a deceiver the bible says your adversary the devil comes to you like a roaring lion is a deceitful person is not a lion but he tries to act like a roaring lion what does the role of a lion does to a human is to make them afraid and the devil wants to put fear in you so that through that fear the fear of not going to succeed the fear that you might die you might get into accident or things like that every fear the devil throws at you the bible says you've not been given the spirit of fear but of power of love and of sound mind let this encourage you that if you use your authority in Christ, you are going to trade on all these powers of the enemy. And now the assurance comes 
Number three, recognize your backup. The person that gave you authority also gave you a backup. He said, nothing by any means shall hurt you. When I studied by any means, it means never, never, nothing shall ever, ever hurt you. Certainly not, nothing can hurt you. That's why you can believe the promises of God in Psalm 91. A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You need to start believing the promises of God that He is your backup. And Isaiah 54 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now for you to know you have a backup, it says, this weapon shall not prosper. This is an assurance for your confidence. Then it says, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Which means, that's exercising your authority. And when you are in a place of exercising your authority, don't be afraid. Don't think you are alone. Don't think that Christ is not with you. He says, I will never leave or forsake you. He says, no weapon will prosper. And you have to note that he didn't say the weapon will not be formed. It means the weapon will be formed and even customized for you. But he says, they will not prosper. And your place is to condemn, to declare every tongue that judges you, that wants to assassinate your character, that wants to take you by surprise. You don't need to live ignorantly. You have to live with this knowledge that you have a backup. Use your authority. Condemn every tongue that judges you. Condemn every tongue that is coming against you. The tongue is for speaking, which is anything that has been spoken over your life that is not in accordance with the will of the Father. You can declare them wrong. And the scripture says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. This is what you need to be reminded of. Your authority is not based on anything about you. Your authority is based on Christ, your savior, your redeemer. I hope this video has been of value to you and you've learned something from this video which you are going to put in practice through prayer, through waking up daily, to use it to declare things into your future, into your day. Thank you so much for watching. I am Uwe Mekwan. This is my YouTube channel. Do well to subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up and meet me in the comment section. Let me hear from you what you've learned from this video or what has been of value to you in this video. Thank you again and see you in the next video. Don't forget to watch it. Thank you.